Friday. And it, this place is jammed with tourists. <laughs> she looks like Michael Jackson. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh no, not the squeaky guy. <laughs> the squeaky guy. The other squeaky guy had a remote control car. They went up with a little cup on it. So it's swinging around the different people asking for the money. Squeaky guy. Doesn't he get tired of work doing that? Cafes are packed. Yeah, we got another beautiful day. We gotta go to the Via Roma. It's like summer again. This is kind of bicycle. Just like standing completely still. And you want to give him a dollar. He's much better than those other guys. <laughs> See if these kids give him a dollar. These are Greek inscriptions. Yeah, mostly tombstones and other inscriptions that were taken from the area around Turkey, mainly, by this one collector, Mafini, or Mafi. And he collected over a thousand of these things. Brought them from the Greek area to uh, Italy. And here's one that's <clears throat> a will. 
written in stone. It's a will. I have a translation here. Exactly a modern will, but it says the same thing. was pretty interesting. Basically, the same elements that you get in a modern will. I live, I leave these things to this one and a certain amount to establish a museum. Apparently that lady had Museum of her husband's things in Greece. <clears throat> this guy was into collecting these funeral urns and funeral pieces. He, he must have stripped off a lot of this stuff from from the graves and shipped them to <laughs> shipped it to Italy. Kind of strange. Third century BC. Yeah, these these range from fifth century BC to fifth century AD. So it's over a thousand years. Of course, we're the only ones in this entire museum. <laughs> it's peaceful. It is peaceful. Uh, that's our motto if you want to get away from the crowds. Etruscans. Go to the museum. Second century BC. This is the style of the Etruscans. The Etruscan style. battle scenes.
It is quite elaborate. Yeah, and they always tell some story. That's the name of the museum. This is the this was the Greek room that we went through before. There's the will. The will written in stone with translation. It's interesting to read that. Here's the guy that started the museum. the oldest public museums in Europe. So this is the courtyard of the museum. This is a pretty impressive building. This looks like it was some kind of a palace. Palace or public building. It's basically a grave robber. It's what? It's basically a grave robber stealing tombs. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Patricia says that he was basically a grave robber stealing tombstones, which is true. I mean. They're all, yeah, they're all pretty much came from tombstones. They call them funerary, funerary still slabs. <clears throat> I didn't have my cappuccino yet, so. Funerary. Funerary. Funerary slabs. Slab after slab. Here's a stone for its horse. Apparently horse cemeteries were, were common. Yeah, horse cemeteries were common. They prized they prized their horses.
Well, there's certainly a lot of slabs to look at. Not the most interesting thing, but... Apparently very interesting to this gentleman. Oh, it's art speak. They have a little installation set up here. Discordant music. Radio Museum. The display of radios and radio technology. Marconi's got pictures. Here's pictures of Marconi on their yacht. So he made uh, made some money from radio. A collection of all kinds of different radios. Army radio, radio books, portable radios, table radios, radio parts. What do they have? Radio liquor cabinet. It's a bronze statue. Radio tubes. Telegraph station. Oh, look, this is a poster from the uh, fascist regime. And the Mussolini.
they put these these little art installations up, but it covers all the exhibitions. Here's Columbia Record Player console. Tubes. Tube radios. There's the antenna. German radios. It's Third Reich. RCA. This could be a little better organized. I guess they're in construction. Things are kind of torn apart. Now we're getting into a little more modern stuff. But they don't have this organized yet. More interesting when they get it organized. Look at this one. Detached speakers. Yeah, before it's time. Boom box. Look at that. This looks detachable. Whoa. Home newspapers. Kind of funky place. It came with our Verona card, so we're here. <laughs> That's what we do. We get these cards, and then it's a challenge to hit every single spot. I think we got about five more spots to go. This is in like a basement of a technical school. So, so you wouldn't get into these places if, <laughs> if you didn't go. If you didn't go to all of these little out of the way museums. Plus, you got to go. You got to go all over town, so it keeps you walking, keeps you in shape. This is uh, by Greg Wyatt from uh, New York State Sculpture. Dedicated to Shakespeare's work. We're at the Tomb of Juliet. Courtyard of the Museum of Juliet's Tomb.
This uh, these are Roman amphoras. These are the same ones we saw. They kind of smell like oil. At the mound of the shards. Transported oil and uh, wine. I wonder why they say from this way. Orange forests. They ditched these. They threw them in the swamp to um, absorb the water. Kind of try to dry up the swamp. That's how they were. That's what, how they were stored. I guess that's, uh, they got a ring on the bottom, where the bottom of the amphora slipped through an iron ring. This is also a museum, besides the fictional character Juliet's tomb. It used to be a monastery. This is the model of her house. This is the Palazzo Fiorano. It's a palace on the river. The frescoes on the uh, statues are from the palace. Beautiful colors. Look at the colors on these. Mm -hmm. I can see them just a little better. <clears throat> Nice table, chairs. This is from the fifteen sixty, fifteen seventy. Restoring this church. Uh -huh. No flesh. No flesh. Okay. <laughs> yes, they're uh, restoring all this. Working on it right now. Very large painting.
they are, they're very nice. Going to the tune. Yeah, it's a beautiful courtyard, and the, this used to be a monastery, as I mentioned. This would mean the, where the monks stroll and meditate. Strolling, strolling. Here's the well. Yes, that is nice. We get down to the tomb of the fictional Juliet. Here it is, folks. As you can see, there's no body because she doesn't exist. Okay, here's the story. They, they live in Verona, and there are two rival families. They meet at the mask ball, and they don't, they don't know the identity of each other. They fall in love. He sees her at a balcony and pledges eternal love. However, yeah, and then they secretly marry. Now, he gets, Romeo gets into a, con uh, a fight with Juliet's cousin and kills him because they're rival families. Then they have a secret night of love and then they make a plan Romeo's got to leave because he's being pursued for killing the cousin. So they have a plan. There's a monk that's going to give her a potion that makes her appear dead for 72 hours. So, and, they, and Romeo's supposed to leave but come back and meet her. Now that, there's the monk with the casket and, and Julia. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> that's Romeo. I'm, that's a Romeo. That's, he's disguised as a monk, and Juliet is in the, the... She's in the stupor, but she's in that casket that we just saw downstairs. That's the casket. It's not a casket. It's, 
It's a, yeah, it's, it's a, a resting place, sarcophagus. So what happens? Romeo comes back, he sees Juliet dead, right? And so he's overcome with grief, he kills himself. Then she wakes up and kills herself. And that's the story. So that stone, kind of a casket you saw down there, was the place where she was uh, laid out under the drug's influence. So that's what it is. It's actually not the tomb. She wasn't buried there. It was where she was put after the monks gave her the potion. So here's a monastery, and they have a crypt, right? So what a what a better. How can we raise money? We got this stone grave thing. That obviously that's where the monk put Juliet to pretend she was dead. Perfect fit. We're exiting Juliet's tomb. Beautiful monastery. Yeah, beautiful monastery. This is a cemetery, and these are tombs here. Cemetery, and then along the sides there are tombs above ground, mausoleum type tombs. Looks very nice. No grass, it's all gravel. Looks like some Egyptian temple. We're in the University District. Very cute places. Very nice. Plenty of cafes. Allora, cosa ne dico un tratto qua? Allora, cosa ne dico un tratto qua? Allora, cosa ne dico un tratto qua? Allora, cosa ne dico un tratto qua?